Seattle, Washington, the Emerald City, jewel of the Pacific Northwest. It's summer and time to travel. So if you're heading Seattle way, here's a quick rundown of 10 attractions you don't want to miss. Some famous, some not so much. Ready? Let's dive in. The Space Needle. It's Seattle's most iconic landmark. You see it, you immediately think Seattle. Built in 1962 as the centerpiece of the Seattle World's Fair, it stands 605 feet tall. With spectacular 360 degree views from the observation deck in every direction. Of course you want to go on a nice sunny day if you get up there on one of Seattle's more common rainy, cloudy days, you're not going to see much. So, good luck with the weather, but don't miss it. If it looks good at all, get up there and see the views. Pike Place Market. It's got everything from flying fish vendors to the precious flowers, produce, seafood, every conceivable tourist souvenir and knickknack you could ever imagine or not know that you ever wanted. You don't want to miss these guys. Always somebody singing, buskers everywhere, flowers. Here you've got the original first Starbucks store. And yes, people stand in crazy long lines like this just to spend their money on an overpriced cup of coffee. But if you want to go see it, there it is. Bruce Lee and Brandon Lee Gravesite, Lakeview Cemetery. Seattle's Lakeview Cemetery is home to the graves of legendary martial arts master and silver screen icon Bruce Lee. And buried right beside him is his son Brandon. Both cut down at far too young an age. Nearly 50 years after Bruce Lee's death, there's seemingly more interest than ever in his life and legacy, which translates here into a steady stream of visitors paying their respects here on a daily basis, no matter the season or weather. If you have any interest in the man, the legend, the myth, you can't miss seeing this when you're in Seattle. The Seattle Center. The Seattle Center is a sort of mongrel collection of leftovers from the 1962 World's Fair, together with some modern additions that creates a unique hybrid. A place that combines open outdoor spaces, indoor attractions like the Opera House, the Museum of Popular Culture, Pacific Science Center, the Chihuly Glass Museum, and of course, towering above it all, the Space Needle. It's a fun place to spend a day with the family. Go in the evening, you go see an opera, you can go to the Science Center, check out the exhibits and the fun interactive things they have for the whole family. 
So it's a place you don't want to miss. You're there to see the Seattle Space Needle in the first place. Make sure you spend some time checking out the rest of the area. Alki Beach. This is where Seattle started, right here on this stretch of land when the Denny Party landed here in 1851. Today, Alki Beach is without a doubt Seattle's most popular summer place to hang out, to see and be seen, try to catch a few rays of sunshine and tan those pale skin tones made even paler by the long, rainy, cloud-covered months of fall and winter and spring. Believe me, no one worships the sun like a Seattleite who hasn't seen it in six or eight months. Alka is the place to go on a beautiful summer day. Chinatown, or as it's sometimes known, the International District, one of Seattle's oldest neighborhoods. It's fallen a bit on hard times in recent years. Increasing property values have driven out many longtime residents. Homelessness also contributes drug problems. These Things have made the streets and alleyways in many areas not a place you want to spend a lot of time after dark. But it can still be a lively place to visit, where true authentic Asian restaurants and stores and medicines abound. Definitely worth a visit. The University of Washington campus. The University District in general and the UW campus in particular are somewhat, somewhat overlooked as a tourist attraction, but it shouldn't be. Try to visit here on a sunny day in the spring. It's unrivaled for scenic beauty with the cherry blossoms out, the classic architecture, well worth a few hours of your time, any time of the year, but especially in the spring. No Kwame Falls. Any fan of the 90s cult TV series Twin Peaks will immediately recognize Snoqualmie Falls. Similar shots like these were featured in the opening credits and as backdrop for the fictional town of Twin Peaks in the popular series. But Snoqualmie Falls is very real and well worth your visit. Okay, we're fudging a bit on this one. It's not in Seattle, but in fact about 30 miles east. A quick shot down the I-90 freeway to witness this spectacular waterfall. Don't miss it.
Seattle Houseboats. One of Seattle's most unique attractions are its entire floating neighborhoods of houseboats. First popularized to national attention by the 1993 Tom Hanks film Sleepless in Seattle. In one way it makes sense as Seattle is a city surrounded by water, Puget Sound, Lake Washington, Lake Union. These unique structures are concentrated primarily in two areas, the eastern shore of Lake Union and along Portage Bay. Decades ago, they were small, cheap, and not at all chic. Nowadays, they're exclusive and very expensive. I doubt you could find one under a million dollars. A lot of fun to look at, but for the majority of us, not an affordable lifestyle. The Jimi Hendrix Memorial and Gravesite. Here's another one that's technically outside the Seattle city limits. The Hendrix Memorial is in Renton, a Seattle suburb just to the south of town. But for any fan of 60s music and Hendrix in particular, it's an easy trip to Renton's Greenwood Cemetery to pay tribute to the consensus greatest electric guitarist who ever lived, Jimi Hendrix. And there you have it, Seattle Top 10 Attractions. If you're coming here soon, there you go. Everything you need to see. Thanks for watching.